I'm Anders and this is the easiest way to make loops in FL Studio. And I've just got a quick demo project, which is just this. And we just want to render out this and make it into a loop. So the first thing we need to do is make sure it is linked up to a mixer channel. So the way we would do that is open up our little channel rack here, go to all, and this is called play. Now, if I select it, I can press F2 and rename it. So let's call it example. So you guys know exactly what we're doing. And what I would do then is press command and L and that would link it to a mixer track for me. And as you can see here, it's now linked to mix track two and it's called example. Lovely. Now we can see that it's not clipping. That's great. We want to make sure we've got some audio headroom. However, equally, when we export as a loop, we want to make the use of that maximum headroom. So we don't want it to be clipping, but we don't also want it to just be a really quiet, half cocked kind of sound, right? Now, in some DAWs, you'd do something called normalization to your audio file as you export. However, FL Studio doesn't support normalization on export. So what we're going to do instead is make sure we use that dynamic range by using a couple of tools. So the first thing we're going to do here is just put on the fruity limiter. And what we're going to do here is give it a little bit of gain and take the ceiling down. I'm going to take the ceiling down just to minus 0.1. So we know we're not going to clip and I'm also just going to give it a little bit of gain. Now, ideally, we're not going to clip. We're not going to touch the top of that. We're just going to push it up a little bit of gain. Now we could compress it and reduce the dynamic range. However, I like the sound as it is. There you go, so we're not clipping, but we're coming close to our bit of headroom. And we've just done that minus 0.1, just as a, a fail safe. Now the next thing I would do is I'm gonna put an EQ on just after the limiter just use EQ2 here and I'm just going to put a really low end roll off on this and the reason for that we don't want anything below the 20 hertz range so we give this quite a steep roll off uh, we change our Q so it's just up sort of here and we take the frequency all the way down to 20 so we're definitely not losing anything there we just don't want it there at the be all end all now the quickest way to do this is now have this pattern selected and we know what pattern selected because it says melody example up the top here, right? You know, if you want to rename your melody, you can press F2 once it's selected and rename it to whatever you want it. It can just be melody look. Now we would go into patterns. We've got the one called melody. We can really simply just do quick render as audio clip and it's going to throw us an audio clip that will now be in our channel rack for us called melody look. I can drag that in and there it is ready to roll. And that's completely fine and I like to work with sound like that where it's got a natural tail as well. It means when you cut a sample you've got an end point but you can equally still layer them up. But equally you can still layer them up and it will cut itself perfectly. Alright so no issues there. There's a slightly better way we can do it in the way that we're going to export them. So again we're going to go to patterns we're going to go down to render as audio clip. This gives us a couple more options. Right at the top, we've got a couple of options here. We've got tail, so we can leave remainder. That's what we just saw where it's got that natural tail off. We can also do something though called a wrap remainder. This allows for a perfect loop and I'll show you what it looks like in just a sec. The next thing we can do is go to WAV bit depth. Most sample packs you're gonna find are in 24 bit. This just means we've got a really accurate dynamic range and we haven't compressed it. So we wanna keep those full dynamic. 24 bit just ensures it's going to be perfect. Everything else is pretty much set up as we want it. So HQ for all plugins, 32.6 is going to be absolutely fine for what we're doing here. So we're just going to export that. So let's drop that in. So now that's dropped again into our project and you can see we have a look just here. It's called Melody Hashtag 2 now. And the reason it looks different is because this small section here, just at the end to so this, this is wrapped into the start of this piece of audio. This can be useful when there's a reverb on the sound and you know, it just suddenly stops, but we can wrap it into the sound. Now, personally, I prefer this because I can always just do this and chop them together. And yes, we then haven't got that reverb at the end, but we don't tend to notice it too much anyway. And then it means at the end, 
we can always have a natural fade off of the reverb that's already in that. Now, the other thing is where are all these being stored? Well, at the minute, they're all ending up in the project themselves. So we kind of need to rename them all, right? And then know where they are and how to find them. Let's say we render loads of these out and we've got the different versions we like. And in this instance, I want to keep this version with the tail. If we double click it, the sampler pops up like so. We can very simply just right click and I've got a save as option, right? So I can just call this and then very simply, I've got exactly what I needed in there. And at the minute it sits in the rendered audio file. I'm then gonna go and save it to wherever I want. For example, I'm just gonna bash it on the desktop now. Once I hit save, that is now where that's gonna live. I could go to Finder here, go over to my desktop, whatever we've got going on. And there's my audio file ready to drag back into the project. There you have it guys, I hope that's been helpful for you. It's the easiest way to render out your loops from an FL Studio project. If you'd like to know more about how I make melodies and put those together, this video here will be perfect for you. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.